When flying between New York and the Canadian cities of Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa, travelers are faced with a selection of three airlines they can choose to fly on, from Air Canada to Porter to United. Which airline should you choose? Today, I'm here at Newark Airport to find out which airline you should pick to fly on your next trip to Canada. Join me as I fly on Porter between Newark and Ottawa. Here at Newark Airport, Porter is based out of Terminal B. Opened in 1973, this is possibly the worst airport terminal in the entire tri-state area due to its quote-unquote hub and concourse design. Terminal B has an old airport design that features three distinct gate areas, or concourses, that are not connected to each other. This means that a traveler arriving into and departing from Terminal B has to go through customs and re-clear security before getting onto the next flight, and this re-clearing of customs occurs in the central terminal building. And there's no way to seamlessly connect through this terminal, so if you have to, I would avoid Terminal B. Anyway, Porter's check-in and baggage drop counters lie on level 3, the highest level or floor in Terminal B. Check-in with Porter was a breeze, and I was pleased to find that my flight was barely half full. Checking in and passing through security was surprisingly easy, and within 20 minutes of stepping foot into the terminal building, I'm airside. Please be aware that most of the time, Terminal B is absolutely rammed full of people regardless of the time of day. One reason why the terminal was near empty when I flew out of it in November of 2023 was because it was the day before Thanksgiving. Pulling into gate B-52 is Charlie Golf Lima Quebec Kilo, a 2009-built Bombardier-8Q400. This aircraft has been with Porter its entire service life. Porter features a bare-bones seat design on their Dash 8s, with a dinky tray table and seat back pocket. My only gripe with these seats is the legroom, which is practically non-existent if you place a carry-on or personal item underneath the seat. Speaking of storage, the space in the overhead bins on all Dash 8s is notoriously small. As for the seat back, it's quite stiff. I can't imagine these seats being comfortable for longer than an hour. However, most of Porter's Dash 8 flights are less than two hours long, so in terms of comfort, you should be fine. After noticing that my flight was half empty, I asked the flight attendant if I could move up to the front to film the engine view during takeoff. After speaking with the pilots, a flight attendant led me to seat 4A. Here's our takeoff from runway 4 left at Newark. One noticeable problem when sitting close to or near the engines on a Dash 8 is the vibrations and loud noise that comes from the turboprop engines. To mitigate this, I suggest sitting near the back of the aircraft where it is generally quieter and the vibrations from the engines are less noticeable. However, if you're an avgeek like me, you definitely won't mind the noise. Porter offers free snacks and drinks on all their flights. On Porter, you can order pretty much any hot or cold drink that you can think of, and if you're over 18 on domestic Canadian flights, or over 21 on Canada to US flights, alcohol is also free. Today, I order myself some coffee and pick potato chips out of the selection of snacks that is offered. Porter is very old-fashioned in the sense that it does not offer any Wi-Fi or video entertainment on board their Dash 8s. 
However, their reporter magazine is at every seat, and this does the trick for most flights. Currently, Porter operates two aircraft types in its fleet, the very old Dash 8 Q400 and the brand new Embraer E195 E2. The introduction of the E2 into Porter's fleet has revolutionized the airline. Besides allowing Porter to operate out of both of Toronto's major airports, Billy Bishop and Pearson, the E195 E2 has allowed Porter to expand beyond the Northeast and Midwest to destinations such as Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Orlando in the United States, as well as Western Canada. Not to mention the fact that Porter's brand new E2s feature all the hot gimmicks that the Dash 8 lacks, those being Wi-Fi, power ports, comfortable seats, and such. Interesting. Porter allows you to take home their reporter magazines if you really like them.